were conceptualizing the Lantern Mansion project, we're trying to look for a reference uh, or an inspiration that will allow us to give the project a little bit more sense of heritage, sense of soul. So this is the reason why we have picked the colonial black and white bungalows as our inspiration for Lantern Mansion. These black and white bungalows tend to be nestled in hilly areas with trees, uh, thick foliage, and they've got a very interesting contrast between man-made and the natural environment. When dealing with heritage icon and trying to draw inspiration from it, we need to be very careful because if we just appropriate the icon and its characteristics, then it's kind of a shallow way to do it. On the other hand, if we kind of draw inspiration from it, then the sense of the inspiration will be felt but at a deeper level. So the design process for us was actually had to go through many rounds of iteration with the architects and the landscape architect, figure out how to strike the right balance between drawing inspiration and just imitating the heritage icon. The way we've done it is that the common facilities, such as the clubhouse, as well as some of the pavilions or the gardens, will be maybe more of a direct translation of what a black and white bungalow is. For the residential blocks, apartments, the inspiration will be a little bit more subtle. And really, we just go to the fundamentals of natural ventilation, uh, the sense of materiality that we can feel, and also the connection to nature that kind of guides us in terms of the way we design the apartment blocks. One of the key concepts that we have introduced for the landscaping is the idea of a borrowed landscape. We try to blend the edges and select species that would also blend with the vegetation that is outside so that the sense of the landscape would flow seamlessly from internal to external. Transformation of the Lantor estate have created a vision of an estate with built and nature highly integrated together. If you were to look at the estate or the location from an island-wide perspective, it's got a very strong draw that goes beyond the immediate catchment. Firstly, it's served by the Thompson East Coast Line. And the entire estate will also have very good access because it's planned from day one to have a shelter walkway to the MRT station, wherever you are. And number two is that from a geographical location perspective, it's got very strong connectivity to many places to the central, to the north, and then even to other parts of the island. Lentor Mansion is also a five-minute walk to Lentor Modern uh, Mixed Development. In the Mixed Development, you have various amenities like supermarket, retail, F&B. Within Lentor Mansion itself, there is also a childcare centre. We've designed the entrance such that the access to the childcare centre is actually different and separate from the residents. So in a way, the childcare will not really affect the privacy, but at the same time, for residents, it's, it's very convenient. It is also within a kilometre to two very good schools, St Nicholas as well as Anderson Primary. For Lentor Mansion, we look at it as very much more targeting owner-occupier. So the different unit types from two to four to five bedrooms, no matter how big or small, uh, we put a lot of attention to make sure that this is a home that people can move in and live for a long time. So therein we have to think a lot about the functionality of the space, flexibility of the spaces, and how it can support not just that very moment of one's life, but as time passes, our needs may change or become more. So that's how we really look at every unit designed for land mansion. Very, very much targeted at owner occupying. One of the things that we always do will be the strong sense of arrival. So here we have introduced a driveway lined with some heritage tree and arriving at the drop-off, which is at the clubhouse, which is modelled and inspired by a black and white bungalow. We will have a 50-meter long swimming pool. We will have other sort of leisure pool as well. And the green lawn, 
These are some of the sort of DNA that you typically find in a Guacoland project. Uh, what is new here would be a camping site because we are next to a nature area and so we have introduced a site that you can sort of do camping in your own estate. We have various sort of gourmet kind of a pavilion that will be overlooking the park outside. We've also introduced a pet garden so that owners can, within the estate, kind of walk their pets and let them exercise a little bit and, and so on. What is interesting about the Lantor area is that it wasn't set up as a master development. But in some ways, we have almost become a master developer for the Lantor area because we came in for the first site the first and only mixed development that's linked to the MRT station. And so this essentially will become like the, the town centre or village centre for Lantor. So we do feel that we have somewhat contributed almost like a master developer. Our role as a private developer or master developer, if you will, is really to bring in our private capital, our creativity and our effort to uplift and transform the, the location. And by bringing in the community uh, that will appreciate and be very committed to this estate, it will have a long-term positive impact on, on how this place will eventually evolve. This is a brand new creation. We really wanted to create a sense that uh, the residents who live here will feel like they are actually in a place with history with heritage and soul.